Sports Line, brought to you by Ace Hardware, AKLC Studios, Arnold Furniture, Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, Basio's Italian Deli, Highland Tire, Matteo's Pizza, Myrna's Brewery Outlet, Attorney Gino F. Peluso in Lower Borough, the Rusevich family of funeral homes, 380 Discount Warehouse, Tower Auto Sales, and Westmoreland Insurance Services. And it's great to have you with us. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching us on the live streaming this Monday night, welcome to the program. If you're watching us on the Thursday night, keep in mind the contents of the program were recorded on Monday night earlier this week. Anyway, welcome to the program. Nice to have a Steeler victory in the hip pocket when we get on the air. But I did confess to Mike that I thought whenever the Steelers or whomever uh, one of our local teams, the Pirates or the Penguins, would lose. That's when people get on the phone <laughs> and say, here's what I think is wrong. Tell us what you think may be right. The Steelers did win yesterday only by four. By the way, did we cover the spread, Mike? Um, yes, because we were not favored. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, the Steelers were underdogs. More under than that, then. The Steelers were underdogs yesterday, yes. Yeah. Um, I believe three, three and a half, something along those lines. So... I, I figured, you know, that was, that was worth it. But uh, a lot to overcome, a little bit of a different travel schedule. Um, they had to overcome the officiating. I hate to harp oh, on that. Gosh. But when the, when the head referee of yesterday's game is a guy that feels that he gave a game to the Steelers at one point um, and says that he would go to his grave with regret about Super Bowl Forty, and then you see what he did yesterday, it kind of makes you wonder why he's allowed to work a game that the Steelers are involved in. So... But maybe that's just me, but maybe we can get into that a little bit later on. I got, that left, kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, especially on ones that he was able to review um, and, and, still, and still messed them up. So. Well, I, uh, you know, my usual habit is to turn the sound down and listen to uh, Billy Hillgrove, uh, Tunch Yolkin, and uh, Craig Wolfley, Craig Wolfley uh, the Wolfman, and uh, let it go from there. But they did. They did do some crying like Joe and I used to do, and I'm sure like I, you I do. I still do. And, to this day, uh, we do. you know, they couldn't figure out why those ticky tack calls were being made. Mm -hmm. And you can't, and the one in particular where they said he speared mm -hmm. with a helmet, it wasn't so. Well, yeah, they said it was a helmet to helmet hit. He hit him and, and it knocked the wind out of him, <laughs> hit him in the ribs. And yeah, not only that, yes. but the he ball was still in the air. The ball was still uh, in the air. You were so allowed to game. hit the receiver after right. it was tipped. Absolutely. That was a bad call on two yeah. accounts. Anyway, folks, you're invited to call 724-236-0430. Uh, and when we get you on the line and you make your comments, if you want to stay on the line with us to answer a trivia question, it uh, will win you some prizes as we take a look at uh, rules and regulations in order to win. First of all, you can only take home a prize every other week per your household address. Uh, the Grand Salami or the Mystery Profile is only winnable once a calendar month. It's one or the other. We give you 15 seconds for the multiple choice questions, 20 seconds for the Grand Salami and the Mystery Clue, or the Mystery Profile rather is Clue by Clue. So we, have, uh, we do have fun with that. Last Absolutely. week, nobody bothered with the mystery profile. First time callers will win two or more prizes with a correct answer. That's why they call me generous. DoubleDribbleBob.com has all the answers to the questions that we have here on the program. And uh, we invite you to uh, go to my website. Also, my Sports History and Nostalgia program every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. WAVL 910 on the AM dial. So that's where we're coming from. Tony is going to be first up on the line when we come back. Oh, I so can't, I can't wait. Uh, Tony uh, always uh, has a, a few choice things to say. We, we had breakfast in the same restaurant 
my family and I at one table, and he was across the way, mm -hmm. and uh, I just knew that it was him. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We're coming back. Stay with us, folks, here on Comcast Cable Channel 190 and live streaming. Don't go away. Auction and Discount Warehouse, Route 380, Murraysville. Automotive supplies, groceries, housewares, pet supplies. All at discount prices. Sofas, dining tables, recliners, dressers and desks, lamps and end tables. All at discount prices. Yard and landscaping supplies, special catalog orders, mattresses with full warranties. All at discount prices. School supplies, tools, paint, toiletries, model cars, toys. All at discount prices. Get to 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse today, Route 380, Murraysville. Why do Arnold Furniture's customers continue to come back year after year? Maybe it's the personal touch that the Miller family has provided since 1975. Maybe it's the prices that are consistently lower than the competition. Or how about the selection? Four floors of living room, dining room, recliners, bedding, accessories, and so much more. Plus free local delivery, free setup, and free removal of your old furniture guaranteed. The choice is obvious. Visit Arnold Furniture online at arnoldfurnitureinc.com or stop in and see us today. Max and his son made their way homeward bound when mischievous rain dropped down, down, down. Safety was threatened by every roguish drip. They slipped and slid. They couldn't get a grip. Then along came the Michelin Man, reminding them the right tire changes everything. Stop up to 31 feet shorter than a leading competitor with a new Michelin Defender tire, backed by a 90,000-mile warranty. Michelin, a better way forward. Available at Highland Tire under the bridge in Toronto and Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. And when you shop for a pre-owned vehicle at Tower Auto Sales in Blonox, you have your pick of the best products, the best selection, the best customer communication, and most important, best service after the sale. Just buy it at Tower Auto Sales. Call Mike Fento at 412-828-6202. And again, folks, uh, my website, Double Dribble Bob, has uh, all of the Trivia answers. Give it a try. Log on. Okay, Tony. Good, uh, good to have you with us. Welcome to the program. Hi guys. How are you? Okay, good, Tony. If I was at that game yesterday. I would have gave that guy his wish at referee. I would have sent him to his grave. Oh, he had that bad call and about a dozen more he made yesterday. Well, you know, and it's not all just the ref that makes these calls. I mean, it's the whole crew together. But he's got control over the whole thing and. You know, I don't, I don't think there was any conspiracies, and I don't think that they wanted the Giants to win because of what happened with the, with the, with the weather well, and everything. It sure but seemed like it did. It sure seemed like it's exactly what I was going to say. It sure <laughs> seemed like it. It did <laughs> enter the mind. Yeah. Well, how about uh, Wallace getting uh, helmet to helmet when he was sitting on the ground? He's starting to get up. Well, um, I, I can almost go for that one because, um, you know, they, they could make the determination that he's not defenseless. Now, I don't know what counts as well, defense. Well, I mean, hey, uh, uh, the hit was fine. If it, it would have been a regular hit, but he, put, he went helmet to helmet. Exactly. Well, That's you different. Can, you can go helmet to helmet. That's not illegal. I think it should be. Helmet to helmet's not illegal in all cases. Yeah, uh, but he was, he was down on the ground exactly. getting up. Uh, exactly uh, right. Wasn't he vulnerable? He was sitting down. I think if yeah. that's not defenseless, I don't know what is. I don't know what is either. Maybe his hand had to be tied behind his back. Anyway. Yeah, well, obviously, he needed, to, he needed to have his head on a swivel, like they like to say. And but then how about the double spear to the, our uh, re return man? Well, uh, it, when it, it was, and as you go through this, what? He was on the ground, and, they, uh, oh, and okay. the helmets went into his gut. And, and that's, that's what I said. Is, you, know, back when, you know, back when they still played real football, that what they called was spearing, which is yeah, exactly spearing. what that was. Yeah. When you come in with your helmet and the guy was down, right. and maybe he had already been tackled, and you spear the guy, come in with your helmet and leave with the head. You know that was that was literally spearing. That's exactly what happened on that. And again, there was nothing there. But you know, between that and the you know the replay of the one that turned into be the touchdown on you know, it's like the, the rule is always empty hand. And you're coming you're coming forward, and you saw that with Eli later in the game that when he came forward, his hand was completely empty as it came forward. Right. And that 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 equals fumble. Right. But the ball, you know, the ball might have been moving in Ben's hand, but if he didn't have control of it, he wouldn't have been able to push it forward. He couldn't have thrown it like he did. Well, you know what? You're right. And they keep saying a conspiracy. And everybody, well, it can't be. hey, wait a minute. It could be a conspiracy just among a few officials that maybe hate the Steelers. Well, you know, because how, how many times that we had to go to New York and take films and show what lousy jobs they did? You know, the Steelers did that quite often. 
and all. It doesn't have to be all of them. It doesn't have to be the well, league. It just could be a few officials. That's I started. Yeah, I started to say earlier, and I, I I do want to interrupt here, but don't you think it's up to the NFL to ha have their own judges on the officials? Well, the WPIA. Well, and they so do. why? And okay. They do. So I assume. And they but, do. So why don't these uh, they instances do. be brought? They do, Bob. Then, then why do the Steelers have to go through it? <laughs> well, well, now just let me tell you. Uh, my son, he he told me, I, you know, he was an official and he knows the bill real good, knows the whole bit. Now. So anyhow, he tells me that I says, you know, I says, why don't they fire the guys? He says, well, Dad, they do, but not till after the season. And, and they don't tell us. Yeah, I mean, right. Even when and, guys get fired, it's it's never yeah. publicized. I mean, that's this, right. And that's why I say about this, Bill Levy. Bill Levy he was the referee of last night's game, and he was a referee in Super right. Bowl 40. And everybody in Seattle, Seattle. thinks it's a Seahawks Seattle. got a job. And this guy, has, there are quotes from this guy talking about, it was a tough thing for me. I kicked two calls in the fourth quarter, and I impacted the game. As an official, you never want to do that. And then he also said, it left me with a lot of sleepless nights, you know, and I think about it constantly. I'll go to my grave wishing I had done better. And they let this guy work a Steeler game. You know, they could quietly say and just not schedule him for a Pittsburgh game. It could easily be done. And you yeah. never know. Nobody would have to know about it, and it would well, just go on, uh, you know, because obviously the guy's a decent official. He continues to work at that level. But, you know, and, and even if it's in his subconscious, he obviously feels some sort of guilt that he thinks he cost the Seahawks the Super Bowl, which is ridiculous. It didn't happen anyway. But, you know, but, you know I, and, and the great part about it was that it, if, if everyone remembers, immediately after the Super Bowl, Mike Pereira, who's now the officiating guru on Fox, who tweets I was looking at yesterday while all this was going on, and each call, one by one, he said how it was a bad call. Every one. Mm. He was the supervisor back then for Super Bowl 40, and he came out the next day and said every one of those calls was right. So either somebody, either somebody's lying. Well, he should have been fired. Well, exactly. Immediately. They should have been fired at the Super Hey, listen. After you do, you know, I don't know how many games they do, you know, and and in the speed of the, uh, you know, of this of pro football, uh, you're going to make a mistake. Sure. But you don't come out and say I'm going to take it to my grave. I cost them the the Super but at the Super Bowl, the the, the biggest game, uh, you know, there is. You, you don't make statements like that. You, you got to be stupid. And I think they should have fired him over that. And you should have never been doing football and they get. But with all the stupid calls. And all the stupid plays. The worst one was a fake field goal. I knew that was coming. Come on, man. <laughs> I know that Are was you coming. kidding okay. me? Are you ready? I hey, that's got to be the most stupidest play I've seen. You know why? He kicks the field goal and ties the game. Okay, he didn't. They didn't. They didn't get the touchdown. What happened if the Giants went drill down and scored a touchdown? Well, and then there, then there are two scores down. But they didn't. I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it either. Oh, I now the reason it. I didn't hate it Wait a was because we won. Wait a minute. Yeah, well, I understand that, but wait a minute. Now, I also, Bob. But, gonna... but there might be a game he does it that we won't win, but listen to this. I also have to admit that I do need to go to confession after it. Yeah. Oh, because confession. The, because oh, the words please. that came out of my mouth are not Arab. I couldn't get through the doors at church. But anyhow, uh, was... let me tell you this. We'll work on that, Tony. We're exactly. running the, the ball the like a good after tomorrow. That happened or not Arab. A half a yard we needed. That big fullback was blocking better than our linemen. He was just blowing people away. If we couldn't have made a half a yard there, so be it. Well, i, I got to I gotta tell you this, Tony, and, and uh, Bob, I know you're going to find this interesting, too. I, I was listening to the fan this afternoon while I was having dinner before I came out, and Josh Miller understands this because he was a punter. He was the holder, and, and he was going through the process of what happens at a fake, and he said that he, he could tell you that dozens, he said, dozens of times, a fake was called while he was the holder, and he, and he called it off every time. Mm -hmm. That while he was the holder, he saw something he didn't like, and, and it is the... And it, he's got that it option? It is the holder's responsibility, not just the option, responsibility. It is the holder's responsibility that when he saw two guys out on that end for Miller to block, that when the holder sees those two guys instead of just the one guy, he calls it off. Uh -huh. and there's a word that you used to call it off, and Josh said that he did it Dozens of times he said he was always afraid it wasn't going to work, so he called it off every single time, and they kicked every one. But you see, right. the interesting part was that after the game, Tomlin said that that was, that was a terrible call. It's on me, and he goes, and I want to thank my guys for bailing me out in that situation. <laughs> he did not throw Drew Butler under the bus. 
and he stood up and took the and, and took the um, took the blame for himself as he should, as a leader should, and I give him credit for that. Now, did I like to call note Tony? I didn't like it, but Miller's Dodge Miller said that that was a play that that the holder has the responsibility that if yeah. it's not he perfect, did, he did a lousy job. He couldn't sense. even throw in the patch because there was two guys on Miller. Mm. Miller was blocking two guys. Exactly, and, and he needs to know that. But that but this is the situation you get in when you have a rookie a rookie holder, which in this case you right. do. But, but, Tony, it's like you said. If you're going to, like I said too, if you're going to go for it, line up your offense the way they were running the ball, uh -oh. go for it. Mm. That's all right. I, mean, I, I don't think anyone would have argued if he would have just lined up the offense and they wouldn't have right. made it. When was the last time? I, I don't know if I can remember this. When was the last time you see a Steeler run a successful uh, screen screen pass? I'm not talking about the bubble screen. I'm talking about to the to, to the running back or even a tight end screen. Where you know where you know where the linemen pull out and I, I can't remember. I they think there was one time it was last year, year before maybe they ran one for a touchdown. But that they was may, it. they're doing it better. But they're, they they don't they don't do it. It's not it's not what they do well. I, I they think they can't do. fool. They couldn't fool fool a newborn. No. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> it's so awful. They keep trying it, and, and it keeps losing. And oh, I, I don't know. Mm. Tell me, you know, work on it if you want to run it, guys, because that's a, that's a good weapon, especially especially when you get an aggressive team like the Giants. You know the way they uh, rush. Huge win. It really is. It changes the whole complexion of the season. We got to get to his trivia. It really does. Tony, we oh. got to go to your trivia. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Go ahead. And rush me. It's all right. Rush you. <laughs> All right. Well, you got you, you you got calls backed up. Okay. Let's let's look at what I don't want nobody on the phone. All right. Let's go for the Grand Salami. Let's go with number four. Number four, Grand Salami. You want to do it, and I'll take. Uh, I got it. Okay. I'm ready. Here we go, Tony. Tony, I don't think you've won since we moved out here. Oh, I have. I haven't won since uh, since Rick's Arnold. Up. Exactly. All right. Here we go. What Major League Baseball Hall of Famer broke Jim Brown's high school basketball record? For most points per game in, on Long Island, New York. Where the heck are you getting Holy this? Holy smokes! I, I this is for, let's put this the first time I've seen it. So don't blame yeah. me. Well, Bruce, I'll read it for you one more Brown. time. It's been on my website. I'm, I'm going to read it for you uh, one I'm more not time, on the website. Tony. What Major League Baseball Hall of Famer broke Jim Brown's high school basketball record of most points per game in Long Island? Oh and just Long to explain, Island, Long Island, Island. Uh, they have their own league like the WPIAL. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when Jim Brown played in the 50s, he set a record of best or most points per game, and along comes so-and-so, who eventually became a Major League Baseball Hall of Famer, and he broke the record. Okay, so let's go with, uh, who the heck knows? Uh, how about uh, 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 Andre D Dawson? I don't know. It is not Andre Dawson. <laughs> wait, wait do you hear who it is? The answer... Uh, Let's put it this way. He went to Notre Dame. Does that help you? Uh, he went to Notre Dame. He did. He made. A, you know, he was a Hall of Famer in baseball. And he was a Hall of Fame baseball player. <laughs> Boston Red Sox. Oh my. Carl Yastrzemski. Oh, Strzemski. That's yeah. it. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine, Tony? Thanks. Thanks for participating. And by the way, and I got to tell you, you're welcome for letting the Irish still have their title hopes. You're welcome. What do you mean? You, oh, yeah. Well, don't forget, if he don't miss the extra point and he don't miss the field goal, but I, I, let's say the field goal, I'll say, go ahead, miss it. Okay. But if he just gets the extra point, the game's over in regulation. Well, exa exactly. Okay. Uh, you know what? Oh, it is. So, oh, hey, you know what? Oh, You're oh, welcome. Me, I get... I'll take all, all, all donations. You know, I've been... I've been to a uh, you know support group for for years with this Notre Dame. So so have I. <laughs> oh yeah, you you've been there forever. It was a rough night. I was trying I, I to handle it. I feel sorry for you, buddy. Ugly, yeah. It's hard breaking these two guys up. We have a commercial Bad break. Stories make me cry. Hey, right after I got hang up, I'll, I'll cry for at least two seconds. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. All right, guys. All right, have commercial a break. Time. We're going to do that. Come back. Terry is on the phone with us. When we return, stay aboard. Don't go away. This is where you get the absolute freshest deli meats and cheeses, Fazio's Italian Deli in Arnold. At Fazio's, you're getting only the best and freshest selection. Fazio's has its own bakery and offers you fresh baked bread, rolls, pastries, and more. Pick up individual salads to go, Italian sausages, hoagies, custom-made sandwiches, even party trays for your next get-together. Freshness and quality every time at Fazio's Italian Deli, Leishman and Dre in Arnold. 
Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Westmoreland provides a full range of coverage for all of your automobile needs. Westmoreland Insurance Services, putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. Lower Borough Attorney Gino F. Pelusa was honored to be the first AK Valley lawyer to serve as president of the Duquesne Law Alumni Association. For over three decades, Attorney Peluso has helped local people get what they deserve, providing his expertise in Wilson Estates, auto accidents, DUI, and bankruptcy law, where he serves as a debt relief agency helping people file for relief under the bankruptcy code. Call Attorney Peluso, 724-339-8710, or visit attorneypeluso.com. Let his experience work for you. And part of our Sportsline telecast, sponsored by Matios Pizza and Subs in Durenham. <coughs> Pardon me, I knew this was going to happen. Michael. <laughs> sure. I'm sorry. While, while we're at it, everything on Matios' menu is made with quality ingredients, and that could be the reason people proudly pass on the word about their great food. Hand-tossed pizzas, gyros, sandwiches, subs, hoagies, calzones, strong bullies, wing dings, and more. And of course, the Iron Man hoagie, which is all everybody talks about, it can feed a family of four for probably a week. <laughs> Buy it on Monday, you'll still have that thing on Friday and you'll be feeding everybody with it. Matty O's across from Dresser Stadium, right along the river and right next door to Clark Candies. You'll be able okay. to find it right down there in Toronto. Let's, uh, let's hop back on the phones. And a reminder before we get to Terry, my Nostalgia Radio program, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, WAVL. 910 on the AM dial. Terry, how you doing? Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, Terry. Good to hear from you. Hey, Bob, uh, you're looking very dapper tonight. Uh, are you going to a wedding after the show? I have or? a speech to make before the Arnold Lions Club tonight on my Good book. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. And, and, Mike, I heard some commercials on TV about you. They, they kept talking about my lows, my lows. Yeah, and it was it killed me because every time I heard it, I kind of turned my head around. It was like, what are they talking about? It's like, I, I do not own lows. That is someone else. That is not me. I wish I did. I wish I just had a little bit of it. That'd be kind of cool. You know, I was, I was going to call in and do what Tony did, go through all the gruesome details of the refereeing. But since he already did that, <clears throat> here's my suggestion for fixing this problem. And I know they'll never do it because they'll claim it'll slow down the game too much. But you, get, you still get your, your three challenges like now. But if you keep winning your challenges, you never run out. And you can challenge everything. You can, challenge, you can waste a challenge on the fact that the, uh, the, the white paint on the line markers is too bright and it's, <laughs> it's uh, blinding your receivers. Uh, challenge anything you want. You still get three. But if you never, never are wrong, you keep getting challenges. So you could... You challenge this penalty because it was uh, not a head-to-head. -head. You win, you get another one. Even if you're in the fourth quarter, and you have won eight already. I, I don't disagree. I, I always thought that they should be able to, you should have as many. But, you know, that could be easily fixed, and they could just use the college system where every play is under review anyhow. And, and it really doesn't slow the college game down that much. It, it really doesn't. And, it, it, you know, every play is under review, and it's, and it's looked at up in the booth, and they can call down. And there is also the system where if they don't call down, then the coaches are allowed to have a couple of challenges. They, but actually what they have to do in college is you have to call timeout first, um, regardless of, you know, you have to call timeout to, to make the challenge. But, it, it, you know, it, it works in college. The technology is there. And, I, I, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's like, in a, like the one that Tomlin had to challenge yesterday. When that guy runs backwards, Victor Cruz, he runs backwards away from the first down line and gets tackled. Right. They right. give him forward progress. What a, I mean, listen, wasting a challenge on something that easy is, is, just, is just terrible. And they said you only get two, and you get the third one if you get the first two right. But I, I, I agree with you 100%. I think you should just be able to keep going. As long, as long as they keep screwing up, you should be able to keep calling them on it. Mm -hmm. And my fix for the designated hitter, I mentioned this to Bob one time weeks and months ago. Um, in the American League with these uh, really brave pitchers hitting people intentionally that never have to bat, if, you, if the umpire feels it's a deliberate hit by pitch, the team immediately loses its designated hitter, and that pitcher does have to bat. He cannot be removed from the game until, until he, he does bat. Time. In other words, if you want to replace him on the mound, fine, stick him in left field. But he has to bat. 
He then That'll becomes that designated down real quick. Yes. I like that idea too. That's a good one. Now, is that in force? No, no. No, we can't. Uh, no, I I never have that because that would just encourage that would just encourage beaning. Which sometimes I think that's not a bad idea to encourage beaning. Well, I, I love the idea. I'm yeah, surprised well, they, it's they, they not in force. The I mean, he makes a great point because you, you can't. You know, these guys never have to answer for what they do, and. And, and at least, you know, at least even in the National League, th these things usually get taken care of in, even mm -hmm. in spring training. Like, um, Matt Holliday is going to get hit by the Giants in spring training. There, there's, there's, I mean, it, you, you can mark it down. I want to look at the, find the Cactus League schedule when it comes out and see the first time that the Cardinals played the Giants. Matt Holliday is going to get hit. He just is. And, it, and a lot of that stuff gets taken care of then and nobody really hears about it. Some, mm -hmm. some of the best beanball wars happen in spring training. Well, the, the Indians, uh, Ubaldo uh, Jimenez, hit the Rockies shortstop because he didn't like what he said over the winter about it. Solowitzki, yeah. Yeah, and mm. uh, so he got a five-game suspension. <clears throat> so they appealed it, and he pitched. Then they dropped the appeal. He went on suspension. There was an off day because it was April, and then he came back and didn't miss his ro uh, regular rotation spot. Um, <laughs> that should not be allowed. No, no, it's, it's, it should be um, – they should, they should do for a starting pitcher. They should be a number of starts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, they try, and they try to say, you know what they normally try to do is they, is they want to make them miss one start. So they, they usually try to say six days. But like you said, in April, that can be, you can get around that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you could definitely get around that in April because, you know, just the way it goes and you may not miss a start at all. You could have one rain out, one off day, and you don't miss anything. Did it seem, did it seem strange to you that they showed the um, uh, Cincinnati-Denver game yesterday instead of Baltimore-Cleveland? I was Since watching. There were two I was teams from our, our division in the Baltimore Cleveland game. It was weird because I thought the same thing. It, it, I, I, well, I, I think they went with the network um, because that was the number two game. That was their top one o'clock game for the net, for the for the country. Was Cincinnati the, was the Cincinnati Denver okay. game, right? Because they had their number two crew on it. I think that's why they went with it. Because I said the same thing. Strangely enough, I think I would have rather seen the Baltimore Cleveland game. But I was lucky. I got to see the second half because I went someplace where all the games were on. But because um, Cleveland Cleveland went ahead. Cleveland kicked five field goals and were winning 15 to 14 in the fourth quarter. And then, just as sure as you know, as soon as they kick it off, it's like Baltimore just marched it right down the field. It's like, okay, I guess we got to get serious now. By the way, you are allowed to say where you were. They are a sponsor. Carnivores. I watch the games of carnivores. Every game is on. They have a buffet for the Steeler games. The place is packed. The, uh, the staff is terrific. And seriously, okay, okay. you, you got to. I mean, <laughs> if, if you want to go, ever want to go to some place to watch games on Sunday, and every game is on there. That's that's the place to go. So I got to see the Browns there. Good. Well, I better uh, get out of here because there's other people I'm sure wanting to get on. Okay. Are you ready for the mystery profile? Or you want to go uh, grand salami? Uh, I can I can try the mystery profile. Sure. I can lose at anything. Okay. <laughs> Bob, you are up. All right. Here we go. Mystery profile. Sponsored by Matios for uh, Terry. Okay, clue number one, if you get it right off the bat, it's worth $100 in prize coupons. I am in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, oddly enough, attended Notre Dame University on a basketball scholarship. Carl Yastrzemski. Oh, my God. You know, we were just talking about this. I sh <laughs> I was going to say, when I read really that true? first clue, it was a, I forgot. It was a wonderful convergence of events for you, Terry, because, because Tony, uh, there, there were two Carl Yastrzemski questions, and Tony just had to get one. It, was, it worked out beautifully for you. Well, you know, if you want to give me a different question, no, that's no, fine. No, no, that's no, not really no. fair. That is the no, question. No, no, no. You, you are the winner. You have $100 worth. Sometimes oh, things work out. out. I think, uh, Terry, you may be our first profile winner, first $100 winner since we've made the move. Uh, yeah, but I cheated. I listened. <laughs> well, that's not cheating. No. That's, that's paying attention. <laughs> Terry, thank you so much. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, guys. Always All appreciate right. your call. How about that? He wins a hundred bucks. Well, let's right go off through the, the rest bat. of the. Uh, yeah, let's do it. They, they, they went through them there. Twenty, twenty-three uh, seasons with one team. Yeah. A member of the three thousand hit club, and the nineteen sixty-seven triple crown winner was Carl Yastrzemski. And when he was at Notre Dame, they called him Murph. Because they wanted to, he was Polish. And they oh. wanted to make him, they they wanted to make him Irish. Irish. <laughs> exactly. All right, Chris, thanks for holding on. Man, you've been on hold since uh, Sunday morning. How are you? Okay, good. How you doing, Bob? Hi, Mike. Chris. Right. Hi, Chris. How you doing? I was really surprised we didn't lose that game. I mean, because of the poor officiating. Well, Let's yeah. Let's say poor incompetent, maybe. It, it was yeah, bad. That's what it seemed like. It seemed like the officials didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, that'd be one way of putting it. I, I, I've never seen that many. 
against one team that fast. No, I didn't either. I, that's another thing. Another thing that I really thought was amazing was the uh, when they did that fake field goal. I just don't understand that. Or was I wrong about the fake well, field goal? If it they works, it you're not wrong. If, if it works, it didn't work. <laughs> well, that's right, Bob. If it works, it would have been the greatest call ever, right? right. I, I, you know, it's and me. you'd be singing a different tune. Everybody's saying, "Boy, that's Tomlin. He's got the guts of a burglar, doesn't he?" Yeah. 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 Well, he does. But, you know, I, 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 I like I said, I, I didn't hate it, but I also didn't like it because it didn't work. That's a result. Fakes and gadget plays are results-oriented plays for me. Uh, it, that has to be. Did it work? Then I liked it. Obviously, it did work because we have a win there. Exactly. Well, we got Kansas City coming up, Chris. So what do you think about uh, the Chiefs? And I think we checked on the line. I what checked, was it again? I checked the line. The Steelers are 12 and a half point favorites against the Chiefs next Monday night. I think that's light. Well, I, I you know, but you know, when the Steelers are Monday night, you know, anything can happen because they're it's all nationwide. Well, I hate to do this. The Steelers are not going to lose to Kansas City at home. No, on they're Monday not. Night. It's not going to happen. I don't think so. I don't because, I mean, they're, good. they're on the road now. they got two for two right in a row. Well, here's the thing now. They have that game against Kansas City, and the week following is ball, oh. the first Baltimore games at home. And an interesting schedule. They play Cleveland the week after that, and then Baltimore again the week after that. That mm. Cleveland game and that sandwich, it was sandwiched in between those two Baltimore games, is probably going to be the most dangerous game of the year. Really? Absolutely. They, absolutely. they, they, they could lose that game. Challenge. There's no question in my mind they, mm. could that, they could lose that game. It's well, just the, in a bad place. But as we sit today, uh, Baltimore is one game in front of us, and we've got, uh, we've got them twice in three weeks coming up shortly. But as Mike and I were talking about, Kansas City, next game on the schedule, let's take the other ones game by game. Right. So you got a Monday night game coming up. It'll be at home. It's a game you should win. And the good news, too, Chris, is that in the first Baltimore game, they're going to wear the Bumblebee uniforms again. No. That's going to be nice. That'll be something different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown to like them. They're undefeated in them. I, it was on your computer it's screen. It's on my, uh, it's my background. There it is right I, there. Uh, you got to love it. Uh, I'm really upset because they canceled the Winter Classic with the hockey season. They might as well push the hockey season on the, well, it now. Yeah, it's, Chris, from what I understand, and maybe you may have read something about this too, Bob, is what they, what they did with that was that they had, to, they had to make the cancellation by X date, which I believe was last Thursday or Friday, whenever it was, because there, it, it was a money issue. Correct. That the payoff, that the, that the buyout to the University of Michigan was a lot less if they'd have done it on that day. If they would have waited one more day, I think it goes into the hundreds of thousands or the millions or something. And so they, you know, it doesn't look like now, there does seem to be some momentum in the talks and that uh, Bettman, and now here's the thing, they supposedly did so well over the weekend with the number two guys doing the talking, and now Bettman and Fear get back to the table. And sometimes when, when heads butt in situations like this, that kind of, you know, maybe it might be better off to leave those guys out of the room for a little while. You know, by the way, I, I think sometimes your secondary uh, backup are your best units. Exactly. In, in negotiating, I think that happens sometimes. There's, they need to bring those guys, and this is what I'm hoping. They need to bring those guys in to put the clothes on it, to close the deal. And, and they, should, they should let Bill Daly and Steve Fear, who's Don Fear's brother, that's his right-hand man, they should let those guys, you know, do what they're doing. Now, from what I read, this isn't exactly like it's going to happen in, in a day or two, but th there does seem to be some momentum, and there hasn't been no, there haven't been any leaks as to what the substance was, and mm -hmm. that's good. They're keeping it in the yeah. room, so. But it seems to me like your CEOs and your general managers, they seem like they uh, wreck everything. Well, I, I just hope they get it done here soon, yeah, Chris. Let's, let's it, get, let's get hockey. hockey. It's November, yeah. it's time. Chris, we let's, need some hockey. let's do some uh, trivia. What do you want to do? Multiple choice, please. Right, is it your turn, Mike? It is. Let me okay. get to the list. Here we go. Number eight. First one on this page. We're on the other page already. Who was the first player to hit for the cycle in both leagues? And this has got to be a small list. Bob Watson, John Olerud, Mark McGuire, or Dave Kingman? I'm going to say Dave Kingman. That is not correct. That was a good guess, though, because he played for just about everyone. I wish I could try again here. I have. I think I know who it is now. It's Bob Watson. That's Bob Watson. Did I was going to say that, but I, I think I, for Houston and the Yankees might have been his two. Uh, might have been his two. It was, I was going to say that, but I didn't get a chance to get the second thing. Get, get second win, didn't it? Exactly. All right, Chris. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Bob, I saw a thing this week. Uh, Pascual Perez passed away. The former pirate. He was murdered. In the Dominican Republic, in his home, in a home invasion, three men. Is came he in the same one that was involved in that uh, fight with? Um, and there was a fight uh, they with should, the Dodgers back in uh, it, underneath the stands yeah. in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and there, and, and there was another one. There was another one that they showed that 
there was another one they showed in Atlanta it, uh, against, um, I believe it was the Padres, and Bob Watson was on the Braves, and, and, and this mm -hmm. made me think of it. He was out there in the middle of this brawl. It was an unbelievable brawl that <laughs> he came up the bat four times, Pascal Perez, in this game, and they hit him all four times because of, he had hit someone in the first inning. The Padres were down to their fourth manager because everyone got thrown out of the game. Dick Williams started <laughs> off as the manager, and all the coaches down the line kept getting thrown out every time someone got yeah. hit. And uh, Joe Torre was the manager of the Braves, and he was exasperated. He was just standing there, and I, I saw it last week, but uh, Pascal Perez needs an untimely end. Thanks for the call, Chris. So let's take a break. Uh, Mike and I will return, and uh, we'll uh, take your call when uh, we come back. Stay aboard. Since 1914, people in the local area have relied on the Rusevich family in deepest time of need. The Rusevich family is the oldest established name in the funeral profession in the AK Valley. Its reputation and unquestionable service speaks for itself. Now the proud tradition of service continues with a fourth generation. The Rusevich family serves the AK Valley from two locations, Fifth Avenue Arnold and Leechburg Road, Lower Burrell. Welcome to Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, the place for big appetites. Their great sandwich selection includes the Geronimo, piled high with generous portions of meat and fixings. Their barbecue ribs are the best in town. Half rack or full rack, they don't come better. Buffalo Bill's wings are everybody's favorite. Uniquely oven baked, not deep fried, and yet so crispy. Your choice of 13 flavored seasonings. Grab a bucket for the big game. Eat in or take out, credit cards accepted. Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, Freeport Road, New Kensington, across from Falderelli Square. Husqvarna, taming the wild. And when you shop Tower Auto Sales for your next pre-owned vehicle, you can visit any one or all of their three indoor showrooms. It's a full-service facility with an experienced staff. All makes and models, Lexus products are featured. Just buy it at Tower Auto Sales. Call Mike Fanto, 412-828. 6202. Okay, uh, the limo man, they tell me, is on the limo the, uh, man is ready. Okay, let's uh, let's talk to the uh, to the guy in uh, in his limo. My li Hello, <laughs> limo. My, you know, my Hello, limo, the two the limo letters. man. Trans, transposed. transposed. Did you know that's right? Milo and limo are the same. We just transposed for the odd letters. Did you know, you know what J Jimmy Nance did for me? This was terrific. What's that? Three friends of mine that sit next to me at the Steeler games went to New York, and they did not have tickets, but they wanted they they would pay whatever it was. Jim Nance got them three forty-yard line seats for nothing. Wow. wow. He seems like a peach limo. He really does. Well, he married a girl from. He married uh, a local. That's right. From Mount Lebanon, if I'm not mistaken. Limo, before that you get on with right. your call. right. He married a nice Jewish girl there. Hey, beautiful. Before you get on with your call, I have to tell you something. You met my nephew at uh, McDonald's yesterday. Yeah. You did. Now, he said he didn't know who you were, and I'm sure you didn't know who he was. And he started, um, and he started telling me, he said, I met this guy. He said, got a great voice. And uh, he's, I said, that's the limo man. I said, I guarantee it. And uh, so he. Uh, and we just wanted to thank you for being nice to him, that's all. Oh. Uh, you'll be happy to know gasoline is coming down to 363, Michael. Really? That's wow. good. That's only double what Six it was four, That's only double what it was four years ago, but we're not counting. No, that's that's okay. And uh, oh, Matt Castle is back at quarterback for the Chiefs. That's right. He's gonna play next Monday night against the Steelers, I guess. Brady Quinn was hurt. They got all kind of problems in Kansas City. Romeo Cornell removed himself as the, <clears throat> his own defensive coordinator and um, hired uh, Gary Gibbs, who's been a longtime assistant in the NFL, hired him to be his new defensive coordinator. But it seems like Romeo is going to be a one-year deal there in Kansas City. They're one and seven, Bob. I don't know, this, this is the greatest stat. They've won one game, the game that they won in overtime. They have not held the lead at any point in any game all season except for that when they were winning oh, yeah. at the end of overtime. That's it. Uh, at our 
Rotary tailgate party. Everybody was talking about how good Bob Tattern's show is. That's good to hear. At the what tailgate party? The tailgate party for the Rotary Club. Oh. Over good. in Brackenridge, I've heard the American the, Legion. I've heard that the Rotarians throw a heck of a tailgate party, too. Well, it was wonderful. You should come next year, Michael. No, that wouldn't be a bad idea. We could go for that. We like Rotarians. Yeah. Oh, and the Jaguars traded wide receiver uh, Mike Thomas to Detroit for a pick. Okay. Yeah, not too many trades made in the NFL. That's, the, that's usually news when stuff like that happens. Jacksonville struggles. They're bad. And the Redskins uh, lost again yesterday. Somebody's going to be fired there. Well, I'll tell you what. And Shanahan basically said after the game that, uh, that basically their season's over. And, and now they have to start evaluating talent for the rest of the season. And he had to walk that back big time today at his press conference. Folks in D.C. aren't too happy about that. That um, he would basically throw the towel in on a team that's three and five with half the season. And half the season. Half the season still to play. You know, people do buy tickets. So. Yeah, I know that. Especially know down that. there. They sell out. How are the uh, how is the participation for your lot for the live audience? We do we're doing well. We we have uh, we have uh, a couple of people today. See, there are people that come that, that just don't want to go on. They just, just want to watch. Sit there and watch. So that's that's fine. Oh, okay. George Guido, okay. George will be here in two weeks. I just oh, want to throw. I want to let everybody know because people are looking for George, and Mondays are kind of a bad night for him. But George will be here in two weeks, so I'll get the. Uh, I'll get the Monday night before Thanksgiving off. I'm going to bake pies. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, and Ruben Amaro Jr. picked up uh, uh, the $5 million option for Carlos Ruiz. Shoot. And they kicked Ty Wigington out. Oh, did they? Yeah. That's the type of guy the Pirates will pick up, Limo. They, they, they had him once. They, they could probably do that again. And Jose Contreras, they, picked, they kicked him out. I tell you what, and he they did, gave uh, third baseman Plasico Polanco a one million dollar uh, option. Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of that stuff had to be done. Contreras pitched well for them before he got hurt. I mean, I thought and he Juan, did a really good job. And Juan Pierre and catcher Brian Schneider became free agents. Yeah, that, it's it's free agent season now. I'm sure the Pirates are ready to go out there and spend a whole lot of money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really right. Prove that right. I, now. I won't hold my breath. No, please don't, Limo. We. We, we want you to be here. Don't, don't do that. All right, okay. let's, let's do some. I'm ready for multiple choice, Robert, and I think it's uh, Milo's turn. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll toss the coin. Call yeah, it. it don't matter. I think it's your turn, actually, bro. Go ahead. Uh, is it my you, you were doing okay. evens today. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're on number nine. Okay. All right, what National Football League running back took the least amount of games to hit 10,000 career yards. Among these four, Terrell Davis, Barry Sanders, Eric Dickerson, Steve Van Buren. Who took the least amount of games to hit 10,000 yards in a career? How about Steve Van Buren of the Eagles? No, it was not. It was Eric Dickerson who Dickerson. took 91 games. Everybody else mentioned there was well beyond. That's well, correct. or beyond. Who did he play for? Dickerson played for the Rams, um, went to SMU, got a really nice car when he went to SMU. They paid him off in a car. Um, <laughs> he, he probably, I think he had to take a pay cut to come into the NFL. He played, uh, played for the Rams and... Uh, <laughs> I still think holds a single season rushing record. I think he does. He went over 2,000 once, for sure. You know, you know, Jimmy Leland's back with the Tigers. Right, he, one did, more he year. signed a one year contract. I think he's working on one year deals now. And I, I'll tell you what, I think he might have been a little bit in jeopardy there when things weren't going so well. But um, hmm. I'm, I'm glad he'll be back. He, he deserves another chance. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, win a pennant, I think you deserve to come back. Well, I forgot to mention, Bob. Uh, one of the best pit, uh, Steeler bars in Largo, Florida, it's called Rudy's, and I gave everybody, there's people that remember you that moved down there, but I gave them, everybody, there must have been 100 people there, the doubledribblebob.com. God bless you. God bless you. Give us your call, little man. we got to head for All right, there's a long drive over in deep right center field, and this one is definitely... For Bob Tatter's wife, babe. 
<laughs> Good night, Limo. All right, Mike is uh, going to finish up the program tonight. I've got to head to Arnold. The Bob city, has a speaking the, engagement. Uh, yeah, the city where Are they going to feed you too? You know what? It doesn't matter because um, uh, I, I think they're eating now as oh, we speak. Oh, okay, and you're going to eat at 6.30. You're sliding so. in under the cover of darkness. <laughs> Anyway, like a stealth B2 bomber, you're just going to fly in there. I hope Leechburg police are looking the other way. Exactly. Please All right. do. <laughs> we'll take a break. Mike will finish up, and folks, we'll see you then uh, along the way. Michael? That's okay. Fine. Then we'll be back. We're writing a new chapter with our local sports talk show, Sportsline. Every Monday evening at 6 o'clock, we will be seen worldwide on internet streaming. Go to doubledribblebob.com and get it started. The program will be taped and will air on Comcast Cable Channel 190 Thursday evening at 8.30. We even have a live studio audience on a first-come, first-served basis. Go to Double Dribble Bob for directions to the studio. The studio audience is reminded the doors will open at 5.30. And you can still participate as you would if you were calling from home and still win a trivia prize. Now we're depending on you to keep the program going. And even if you don't have a computer or the internet, you can still call and be a participant on the program. So keep the phone number handy, 724-236-236. 2360430. I'll be looking for you. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Accidents happen. Are you prepared? You can be with a wide range of homeowners insurance options from Westmoreland Insurance Services. Putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. My first book on sports is available not only through the internet, but at various local businesses in the AK Valley. It's Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. Short sports stories, odd and unusual, fascinating and funny, only take about a minute to read. Go online to doubledribblebob.com where links are provided for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Word Association to get book information. Get your copy locally at Costello Printing in Tarentum, Blackburn's in Tarentum, Myrna's Brewery Island in New Kensington, or the Hot Dog Guy's Lower Borough. Welcome to Myrna's, home of the largest beer selection in the area. Myrna specializes in domestic, foreign, and microbrews as well as wine coolers. Myrna's Brewery Outlet has the largest beer selection at the lowest prices. Myrna's carries a large selection of snacks as well as cigars and cigarettes at state minimum prices. Let our helpful, courteous employees load your car. Myrna's Brewery Outlet, open seven days a week. 36 pack. Coors Light cans now available at Myrna's, $22.99 plus tax. Coors Light cans, 36 packs. Stop into Myrna's for that on Carl Avenue in New Kensington. All right, we are back. We have uh, a special guest out in the uh, audience tonight, I believe John. Uh, what do you have for us tonight? Welcome, for our first time here. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. I, I mean, I've learned so much already tonight. Uh, I I, I absolutely do not know that the holder in, in football can call off a, a, a fake uh, a, a field goal or whatever. That was pretty amazing. So I was, I'll tell you what, it clued me in too because I was really surprised. I, I, I heard Josh Miller say it, and, and, and someone who should know and would know because he was there and had to oh, do it absolutely. many times. And as a matter of fact, if you remember, he had a, uh, a touchdown pass on a fake when he was back in punt formation against Baltimore one Sunday night through a long touchdown pass to Bobby Shaw that um, – he, um, you know, he, he always jokes about and talks about that was his one NFL pass and it went for a touchdown. So he didn't call that one off. He must have saw what he liked there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that's how, you know, I mean, it's amazing that the game is so sophisticated. We, we fans take it for granted. And I, I, I think, you know, and I agree with you that Tomlin, uh, Coach Tomlin, I mean, he took it like a man. I mean, you know, he took the responsibility for it. And, and yes, you know, I, I, di I didn't agree with the call like you in the sense I would have just sent Redman up through the middle with, uh, sure. with his uh, fullback leading the way, you know, for half a yard or whatever. But that said, um, I, I want to ask you one question. Do you think a coach's mentality when they make a call like that is because they feel they're getting jobbed by the referees in a game. Now, I know you said you don't believe in conspiracies, but I, 
I'm 60 years old, and I've watched many Steeler games, and it seems to me that there is this, um, well, it's not the Al Capone with the uh, briefcase full of money conspiracy, or, or but, I, you know, I think it's uh, Roger Goodell putting his arm around the, the head referee and going, ah, you better keep an eye on those Steelers. And he was there yesterday. Absolutely. You better keep an eye on those Steelers. You know how they play. They're, they're aggressive. Well, that Ryan, I'll tell you what, Ryan Clark is marked. He might as well have a scarlet letter on uh, wearing on his uniform. because and, and he said it after the game, and he's been quiet this year. He hasn't said a thing because I think they probably talked to him and said you need to cool it because they, they have an eye on you. But that, was, that call in the end zone is one of the worst calls I've ever seen. So now playing hard football, playing, well, playing, playing real football. Real football like I call I mean, it, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you watch those uh, commercials that Coach Tomlin does, don't, you know, don't, how, to, how to hit. With the, yeah, don't yeah, use with, the with, head. Right. Don't use, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what he did. Right. He knocked the wind out of him and he fell down and he was hurt. You right. know, that's football. And guess what? Those guys were a little bit afraid to go across the middle after that, too. I, oh. I I think that that, you know, sometimes a little bit of intimidation goes a long way. And there's a fine line there. Um, you, you don't want to take their aggressiveness away. And Tomlin's talked about this, and I agree with him 100%. You don't want to take their aggressiveness away. Um, but when the money starts coming out of their pockets week after week like that on fines, you know, they start to get a little worried. He did nothing wrong on that hit. And, and, you know, some of his hits are borderline, and I understand that, but that's what a safety used to do in the NFL. A safety used to be the guy that, that, that policed what was going on out there and, and used, you know, used his ability to hit somebody, you know, coming across the middle. You smack that guy a little bit, and he didn't want to go across the middle anymore. Right, absolutely, and, and he didn't spear him. I mean, he, no, he didn't at all. I mean, he, did, he didn't lead with his head. And one of our earlier callers even mentioned it, that the, there, was a, there was a point in the game where one of the Steelers players was speared and there was no call. One of the oh, absolutely. There I was think Tony mentioned it earlier on, you know. And, and nothing was called there, but, you know, I, 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 but I also, you know, I, I don't know about conspiracies. I know Goodell does not like the Steelers. I'm sorry he doesn't. He's, he's proven it with all of his actions. What, what he did with Roethlisberger, I, I still think is ridiculous, but that, that's a different story. Someone that was never charged of a crime, and he sits him down for four years. Yeah, games. I mean, here's a, here's a $100 million young man, and he has a few women claim that he acted irresponsibly. Yeah, Ben did. He's a kid. Let's right. face it. I mean, we, 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 we look at these these young men and we believe you know they're actually have a 50 year old brain in their head it, well they don't you know they're and, 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 they're, uh, you're, they're young men to put themselves in bad positions sometimes and hopefully he's learned his lesson and that. yeah i think he has but and we've all done stuff that we're oh probably my God. right yeah. in, back in the day but yeah. uh, uh i'll tell you what john i have a call on the line so i want to get to a trivia question for you i want to give you a chance to win something to thank you for coming out and then we could take the call so would uh you want to do it a multiple choice question or a um, or a grand salami question? How about a multiple choice? Multiple right? choice. Let's do it. This will be number one up at the top of our list. Let's see if we can get a winner here. Of all pitchers who threw perfect no hit games, which of them threw the most pitches during this no hitter? The most pitches it took someone to pitch a perfect game: Matt Cain, David Wells, Mark Burley, Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson. That is not correct. His, his, I believe, was in Atlanta. Matt Cain's the answer. He just did it, I believe it was this May, for the Giants um, in a game. He nearly pitched a no-hitter against the Buccos, too, but then again, who didn't? Um, but Matt Cain, 125 pitches to pitch that perfect game, the longest, most pitches ever to pitch a, a perfect game in the major leagues. So. But anyway, hey, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. It was good seeing you and nice to talk to you. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. Appreciate that. So we do have a call. Let's go to that call and we'll get that in before we wrap things up here tonight. Good evening. Welcome. Hey, Mike. Mark Corey calling. Hey, Mark. How you doing? I'm on break from work, so I didn't know if I'd Beautiful. I love earlier, it. But uh, I get a chance to call. Um, on that one Steeler play where Roethlisberger fumbled. Right. And, they, and a giant ran it back for the touchdown. Did you notice near about this? 10-yard line, wasn't that Steeler blocked from behind and even the giant guy running like looked around like if they were going to call it? Absolutely. You notice that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that, that was, was, that was, they didn't call that on as a clip. It was indeed another miss, that was another one of the right? missed calls. And, and okay. I, I didn't notice it as much when it happened, I thought so, but th that's one of the times I, I think I lost my mind during the game. And I heard the, them talking about it on the radio this morning, Jim Colony brought it up, and a couple of the other hosts and some of the callers did about it. And um, absolutely, that was that was another that was another blatant foul that that wasn't called, and and just you know just something else that it, it just it was amazing. How in the world they won that game, I don't know. And it, you, and and the one thing I did notice, Mark, and, and maybe you did too, 
was that they didn't seem to complain a lot, that they were so focused on the task at hand, and I think this comes from Tomlin because Tomlin didn't want to talk about it either. Yeah. That, that they, you know, they didn't, you can get so caught up in a game, and anyone that's played a game and has had something like this happen knows this. You can get so caught up into complaining about the officiating and complaining about um, what's going on that, that you, could lose, you could lose track of what you're supposed to be doing and trying to win the game, and they didn't do that. And I think they should be credited for that. I, I, I think they were very, very disciplined. I wonder if it was the emotion that caused the flood and all that, you know, storm trouble that, it, it, no could, it could have been. I mean, there, there was a lot going on there yesterday. That may, might have been the biggest flag I've ever seen, first of all. That was yeah, I just, I just had a feeling that Giants were destined to win because of the situation. And then some of those calls and no calls against Pittsburgh, you know, I just thought for sure they didn't have a chance. Well, let's put it this way, and we, we talked <laughs> about it with, you know, there was so much went on in that game that it made, really did, does make you shake your head and make you wonder. It really did. I would I know it would delay a game, but I would still like to see them have a chance for replays on calls like that one, you know, penalty in the end zone against him for, oh, you, know, that's, you, know, you know, I mean, that could cause a team to lo say lose or win a championship on a call that, you know, everybody in the world saw it but uh, one referee. They were given 11 points in that first half. The final score of the game should have been 24-9. to nine. They, yeah. they, they, they gave him four extra points because they ended up getting a touchdown after that. I'm still not sure about that call. I, I, I think he might have been in. It might, he might have been able to push that over before his, uh, before his backside hit the ground. But, you know, uh, you know that, that there and then, the, and then the touchdown they get on the uh, taking the ball back um, off of Ben when they, when they didn't reverse it. They had two chances to get that right and missed it both times. So, you know, they were given 11, they were given 11 points in that first half. They had 14. They should have had three. I just think they call me late. Bob's off tonight? No, Bo no. Bob left early. Bob's got a speaking engagement um, oh, okay. in Arnold tonight. So he, uh, he bugged out after the last commercial break. So I'm just finishing things up here. That's Okay. I, I better go for multiple choices. Yeah, let's do it, Mark. Uh, we'll, we'll do that right now, and hopefully we can get you out of here on a winning note while you're at work. Even better. Here we go. What NHL goaltender has recorded the most career regular season wins? Ed Belfour, Patrick Waugh, Dominic Kosick, Martin Brodeur. Uh, ha. What was that? The one you said, Ha, Mar ha somebody Haw? Ha? No, uh, I believe the answer is Martin Brodeur. Oh, uh, okay. He just broke the record this past year. Okay, I'm not too good for hockey. <laughs> oh, there? Well, that's, hey, hopefully we'll get it back. We'll educate you a little on it. Okay. Mark, thank you. Uh, you guys have a good night. Okay. We will. Bye -bye. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you out here again next time you can get out. Um, that would that would be good. Before um, b before we go, we're gonna wrap it up here really quickly. I wanted to uh, give you all a little uh, indication of where some of the games are gonna be played on Friday. We lost all of our teams. All the local teams went out, um, which isn't a good thing. Um, and so we have no one we we have no one left to see. So I was I was perusing the uh, perusing the sites to see if there was anything close. Where, where people might want to get to um, to see a game on Friday because the weather's going to be nice and we don't have any we don't have anybody to see. Burl went out. Uh, by the way, watching this game on Monday on the stream, you can see the Burl game here tomorrow night um, at 8:30 on 190 uh, with Bob. Um, Jeanette at Beaver. The game's going to be at Hampton, so that's that's local, local, about as local as we get. There's a game at Fox Chapel on Friday, and that's Mars West Mifflin. That's the two seed Mars against the seven seed West Mifflin. That game will be at Fox Chapel. So that will, um, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a pretty close game, too. Um, and, and as I look through here, that's about, that's about it. There are a couple games in the North Hills. North Allegheny's playing Bethel Park. That game's at North Hills. And then Seneca Valley, Mount Lebanon, another quad A matchup. That's the 4-5 game. That should be a dandy. That one's at North Allegheny. So I'll about wrap it up for us here tonight. Before I go, today being November 5th, um, birthdays to two of our wonderful local AK Valley media celebrities. The Dean Mike Choma celebrates a birthday today, and if I told you how old he was, I'd be shot, so I'm not going to do it. And Bill Beckner, who does such a great job with the Valley News Dispatch um, as their high school editor, he also celebrates a birthday today. So happy birthday to those two guys. They both have November 5th, so I have one later in the month. We're not going to talk about that either. So that's it. Let's wrap it up. Thank everybody here tonight. Thanks to our studio audience. Thanks to everybody that took the time to call. Um, we will be right back here streaming next Monday night at 6. For Bob Tatter, this is Mike Pavlik. So long, everybody. Sports Line, brought to you by Ace Hardware, AKLC Studios, Arnold Furniture, Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, Facio's Italian Deli, Highland Tire, Matteo's Pizza, 
Myrna's Brewery Outlet, attorney Gino F. Peluso in Lower Burrow. The Rusevich family of funeral homes, 380 Discount Warehouse, Tower Auto Sales, and Westmoreland Insurance Services.